All right, I wanted to make a video about tools um, and not tools for professional use, but you know, once somebody leaves the comfort of their parents' home and they find themselves in the real world, whether it's in the dorm room, their first apartment, or in eventually buying their first home, they're gonna need a certain set of tools or probably would like a certain set of tools to uh, do do-it-yourself projects or um, maintain their, their home or or property that they own and so I figured this is this is after 20 years of experience of what I believe uh, somebody should have or may need in the different stages of life largely dictated by um, their living circumstance. I wish someone had told me when I was younger and I wish I had approached it in that manner. I would have probably saved some money in buying uh, better quality tools up front if you know funds funds permit when you should probably spend more um, on a certain tool and when you should maybe save save a dollar or two and get the budget option. So here's the basic set of tools that I would suggest for anyone to have even when they went off to the dorms or if they're just living in a, um, if they're just renting a one bedroom. Usually at that point you'll probably own a computer top and possibly a bicycle and so these are some basic tools that I think um, that don't take up much room that someone should have. So first, first and foremost, I think everybody should just have some sort of um, multi-tool. Now this is a good place to start. This is a Leatherman Wave or any, anything of the sort. It's, it has a built-in set of pliers and then it has a few different blades um, and even it has a screwdriver and a can opener and then, you know, in the dorms, you're going to find yourself, oh, I want to open a can of beans. Oh, I forgot a can opener. I can't find a can opener. You shouldn't use this as a primary can opener, but when you're hungry, it will, it will do the job. Um, it's got a little small pair of scissors, um, and it's got a, a little pair of pliers. Not the most specific tool for tightening or loosening bolts, but if you really just need to get it to get you by, this will, this will do. It's also got a little knife on there. And then I also think a lighter is something useful to heat. All right, and I have this glove here just for a perspective of size. Since you're possibly in a dorm room, there's not, space is at a premium, um, and you don't want to have a whole toolbox that you have to worry about or lug around. And so once everything's packed away, it will, this would be the footprint. It would be this Le Leatherman uh, multi-tool as well as this pack and, and that's all the space it will take up. But the flexibility and the amount of items you could maintain with this small footprint is well worth it. So let's go through um, what, what I believe you should keep in this toolkit. All right, and so in here, I believe, and all of this will, should fit, it will, does fit, there should be, starting from left, a number two screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, um, a number one Phillips head screwdriver, a smaller skinny flathead screwdriver, and then even another smaller two millimeter by two millimeter flathead screwdriver, and a smaller fine Phillips head screwdriver. And this gives you so three different sizes, starting from two, one, and I think this would be a zero Phillips head screwdriver, and that will cover a lot of different screws you come across. With that said, I also think if you have the ability is to get one of these small eyeglasses screwdrivers in case you have something really tiny. Believe it or not, the Leatherman Wave also has a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver that are, that's very small. So between that, you got all just about all your Phillips and flathead uh, screws taken care of in this small footprint. In addition, I believe it's nice, I found this extremely useful to have bit holder. And so this is just a regular screwdriver or magnetic screwdriver where you can place bits in and out and you can get a multitude of different type of bits. The downside of this particular screwdriver is this thickness right here. So you can't reach into, if the place you're trying to reach has got the diameter of this, this will come in the way. And that's why I believe it's, in, especially for Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, is good to have the actual screwdriver in spite of the versatility of this. Um, then I have an X-Acto knife here for small, for cutting um, very finely, a pencil for marking things. 
a pointy nose pliers that can come in handy and I mean the pointy nose pliers are so handy that they're actually included on multi-tools. A, a small basic measure tape of some sort. Um, obviously you can see I've pared this down over the years to make it super super compact and uh, the benefit is is that there's a lot of versatility in a small footprint and flashlight flashlight is very useful so this is and so i used to keep a bigger flashlight in here but now with this was before led flashlights i'm dating myself here but that's why this has now been replaced by a tiny triple a mag light with the led flashlights um, it takes so it takes it gives me the same amount of brightness it's excellent battery life and it's a small footprint a blade or a pocket knife that that's with the dedicated blade box opening cutting things whatever and then I believe also since whoever you may own a bicycle a very very small compact set of allen wrenches not all the sizes but just something to keep in here that for that odd occasion you come across an allen key uh, or allen allen screw you, you're able to you know fasten it or loosen it and that does sit here nicely and then and then in this pack also fits these um, screws and so these aren't quite tools this is technically hardware but in this box I keep extra bits flat and Phillips as well as exacto blade exacto knife blades as well as the uh, eyeglasses screwdriver and here you can see it all packed away nicely including the two tubes of thermal paste not to i did forget to mention there is a couple of very thin rulers in here along with the um the uh measure tape as well as uh um, tweezers there's a couple of tweezers i find those very helpful in doing do, some do-it-yourself projects or if i need them in a pinch and there it is packed away so this is my suggestion for if you're in a living in a one bedroom that you're not responsible for anything else in the place you're just renting it or you're in a dorm room all right and this is for when you own your own apartment and so now you may be able to do a little bit more advanced work on your on things you own such as your bicycle and you may not want to call the landlord to you know tighten a doorknob or something where you could just tighten a screw um, although you should since you're technically a tenant and that's their responsibility nonetheless you may be able to do a little bit more advanced stuff in maintaining your personal items you may be able to build a computer you may need to find you may find yourself hanging pictures or frames so that's what this is intended building furniture for example dorms they usually provide furniture now you're probably going to be needing to build your own bed or desk and so that's the lens with which these set of tools are I'm recommending so first and foremost I would like to start with always have safety gear um, there's a pair of gla safety gla safety glasses earplugs I guess that's not really relevant for this portion but earplugs are also part of safety as well as some gloves you can tell these are these are where my knuckles sit and these have saved my knuckles many of times anyways moving on obviously a bubble level that's to level picture frames make sure things are level when you're hanging them here's a utility knife that's self-explanatory now one thing i do want to mention about the utility knife is when purchasing a utility knife even though this may be a budget setup for you do not skimp on a utility knife because this is a sharp object and you want this one's particularly one this particular one's made by stanley you want something that's not vague engages well is well constructed and doesn't fall apart so it doesn't injure you when you're using it and so uh, i'm going to show you an example of a budget utility knife that i wouldn't recommend so this is a budget version of utility knife purchased from harbor and freight and i wouldn't necessarily recommend it even though this is one of their better ones i think they even have a more budget version that is made out of plastic i think you should, this one's actually made out of metal but it's still not as nice as the Stanley. It's a little vague, um, whereas this one clicks right into place. Okay, so don't skimp out there. Now, as you saw in my dorm pack, there was a, or the yeah, the dorm toolkit. There was 
some super glue. I'm going to include that again just so we don't forget. I think super glue is useful. Pointy nose pliers, not necessarily a second set if you already have one, but just for completion. Um, and if you're going to get a set of a, an adjustable wrench, I, I've showed two sizes here, but I would skip this size and go ahead with the eight inch, an eight inch adjustable wrench. As you can see here, this right here is a um, six inch adjustable wrench, but of the two, if you're only gonna get one, go with the eight inch, it's a lot more versatile. Uh, then there's this slip, slip joint pliers right here. And now here I have a hammer, that's self-explanatory. Um, but one thing I do want to mention about the hammer is this is a very this is an eight ounce mini hammer is pretty much useless if you want to actually hammer it use it to hammer wood. So what I have suggested, if you're really in an apartment, you're really trying to save space, I would suggest in skipping this. This is still okay, but going for a full-size 16-ounce hammer. This is an S-Wing 16-ounce hammer. It doesn't necessarily need to be by S-Wing. These can be pricey, I think $20 plus. This one, I think it was only $2. Um, and this will fit in a toolbox that you may keep in your apartment very nicely. So um, I would. that's my one suggestion. The next thing I wanted to discuss is, uh, again, a bit holder screwdriver and at this point I believe it's worthwhile for someone in an apartment to have a full set of screwdrivers this is um, a size two a size one and a size zero okay p p p2 p1 p0 and then the, and this is the corresponding flathead screwdrivers and then a little bit even though we had the really tiny um, Allen key set. I believe if you're in an apartment and you're going to have a toolbox, you should go for a larger set of Allen, a more extent, extensive set of Allen keys, um, Allen wrenches, and in multiple different sizes, and like this. We and so these under the under the tape measure. These are all higher quality alternatives to what I think are worthwhile upgrading. And so here I I because I've went through this through the same. And so these are longer in length with the same variety, so you can get more leverage when you're trying to torque something that's large down. And these are or reaching for that matter, uh, Allen bolt that's further away that these might not quite reach, and this will get in the way of turning. So if, if uh, I would have to give a recommendation, and the budget does allow. Instead of getting something like this, go ahead with something that's made in the U.S. or um, and, and of a little bit better quality. Again, this would I think these came in at like ten bucks for both or something, whereas this alone was close to twenty or twenty-five bucks. So it's definitely pricier. But buy once, cry once. Now, since we've taken that detour, let me talk a little bit about tool quality. Generally speaking. Uh, there's, in my opinion, there's like three quality of tools. You either have something that's the equivalent of pot metal. And the only type of thing that I would say here that would call as pot metal, which is the worst, is probably the metal on this is not that great. But everything else here you see is none of it is the pot metal quality of tool. Um, and then the second tier, I would say, is something, and usually all that pot metal stuff is made in China. Um, and then the second tier of tool is something that has been that if you hand a professional, they could get the job done with it, but they'll probably wear it out three times faster than um, the third, third tier tool. And usually those tools in the second tier are actually made with some thought behind it. They use a decent type of metal, um, not the best, they use a decent type of metal, and usually those tools are made in either China or Taiwan. And so for example, I believe these screwdrivers, they're definitely decent tools and I believe that they're made in Taiwan. They used to be made in the US and they were even better, but these are uh, made, made, in, made in Taiwan and they're definitely decent tools. You've handed this to any sort of person using these tools as a profession, professionally, 
they'll manage, but they'll probably need one three times sooner than they would something like this per se. This would be a third level tool. This is made in Germany, very reputable brand, Weha. And in my opinion, this particular brand and this particular screwdriver is the benchmark. Beyond this, it's just the, qu the quality of other companies maybe is there, but it's just preference. You know, you don't get much better quality beyond this. But at the same time, this is a $10 screwdriver. 10 or maybe more. I can't remember how much I paid. The screwdriver alone is 10 bucks, whereas this entire, all these together, I think came around 10 or 11 bucks, all six of these screwdrivers. Um, and so do they, at, these are both in like new condition. So do they function any differently right now? Not, not really. But, but you know, five years later, this will still hold up and this might start to round. So there's the difference. Um, and so that's, that, that's what's below the line here, below this measure tape, are all the upgrade alternatives. And so let's go back to completing uh, where we left, let's go back to where we left off. So where we left off was, I hadn't talked about these bit sets. This is a micro bit set. Now that you're in an apartment, you may be able to do a little bit more extensive work with you know, your laptop or your computer, taking it apart, repairing things. And if you don't earn it into stuff, repairing items that much then a budget one will do like this is five bucks but if you find yourself doing it much more often then having a precision a, a high quality precision set like this weha set or even the dedicated dedicated um drivers is worthwhile but of course this is five bucks this was 40 some bucks and i think this set it was like 20 bucks so that's why this line is here i don't I I used this all the way up to like maybe a couple years ago and it was it was fine. And now I got these. They don't get nearly enough use, or these do, but this doesn't get nearly enough use to justify $40 being spent. But I kind of enjoy high quality tools. That's why it's there. And that's why it's also below this line. Um, for example, and also uh, for these slip joint pliers, they're they're not the best. They were a couple bucks, I think. They'll get the job done a couple times a year, but you start using them once a month or once twice a month. They're they're gonna these teeth over here are gonna get eaten up. All, and not to mention this isn't the probably the correct tool for the job. It just help get the job done. Depending on what you're working on, you should have the you know a socket. Um, again, it depends on what you're working on. Um, so here's another upgraded version of that. And this is a very, very high quality tool. I believe it was close to 20 bucks. Here's a better bit, bit driver. Um, one of my favorite tools right here. It's just ergonomic, it's well balanced. And this was, again, $20 for a bit driver. It's kind of expensive. It's also made in Germany, made in Japan, made in the US, made in the US, made in Japan, made in Germany, made in Germany, made in Germany, made in the US. And so about the, the third, the, um, third tier of tools, they're almost always going to probably be made in Germany, Japan, or the U.S., sometimes Taiwan, but generally Germany, Japan, or U.S. Um, and so almost all this stuff, except for that adjustable wrench made by Craftsman, this one was made in the U.S., but it's really old. They stopped making that in the U.S., but my, all these tools are made in Taiwan or China. And then these are, would be the upgrade, upgradable options. Now, the other thing you may want and probably will need in your apartment is a measure tape to see if furniture fits, how to <laughs> center a, um, a poster or a painting. You'll need that. And then this is hardware, so I'm not gonna really talk about that. Now, these moving on to this section. It is placed in between these two paint lines because I feel like this is a transition point from home ownership to an apartment. And I can honestly recommend this for an apartment owner. This is a impact driver and a drill, a cordless impact driver and a cordless drill. This does <coughs> add a fair amount of bulk and weight to your tool footprint. Um, but when you're putting together furniture or working on something, it's just super helpful to have this. The job will go five times faster. Not to mention, 
um, if you have that you're inevitably going to need this when and it's probably going to be the very first thing you buy when you move into a home if you already haven't in terms in the way of tools in terms of tools um, this will help you build maintain and, and do things now regarding impact driver and drills my recommendation is at minimum i would get ryobi if funds allow this is one of those tools that you're going to use very often for building furniture and maintaining items and this is somewhere i would just buy once cry once and buy the Buy the best quality your funds allow, and especially make sure you go with a, one that's brushless. Lithium ion and brushless. The batteries will last forever. They'll be much more stable. They'll charge much faster, and you'll get tons of power out of brushless. Um, I do also recommend be getting a drill as well as an impact driver. They're two different tools. You can get by with just a drill um, if you could only pick one, but I would rather have a lower quality um, drill and impact driver, driver as opposed to just a high quality drill. Um, this is so versatile. And then that's why there's also a set of drill bits that will go with the drill. Um, and the reason I have this out here is to show that this has a, um, it takes these type of bits with the locking mechanism. And so if you have your bits from over here, then you can also make use interchangeably with a uh, holder, a bit holder that can easily be placed into here. So that's self-explanatory, but it's good to know the flexibility. All right, and let's move along to now. Now we we'll make the transition of if you're into home ownership. Now, before we do that, I do want to mention that there. This is a very general video. Now your hobbies or your do-it-yourself projects are definitely gonna dictate what you get when you get. So you very well may have already, while you're in an apartment, you may very well may already have a uh, set of socket, a socket set or a soldering iron and wire strippers because um, your hobbies may call for that or your do-it-yourself projects may call for that. And there's no problem with that. This isn't an absolute, you can only buy this when you own a home. This is all fluid. And you may find that nothing you own takes Allen keys or um, you never want to hang up pictures or frames and you may not find the need for a hammer. And that's okay too. So moving along, when you're in a home ownership situation, I try to lay these out from what you'd need first to what you would need later on as being more advanced. Um, of course, this is fluid, but this is what, in my experience, I found absolutely you're probably going to want an electric tire inflator. Um, and this it also will help you inflate both tires as well as um, inflatable mattresses and things like that. When you uh, new homeowners, very helpful to be able to maintain your own tire pressure at home. And then I think one of the first things you may need is like a very basic socket set. And so this is a primarily a one-fourth drive socket set. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's very basic. I've actually, inter this came with a lot of pop metal type sockets and, and um, even the ratchet wrench. And so those have been replaced to make this a more functional, reliable setup. But this is possibly one of the first things you may need. Um, and I've also put these down here because if you, these aren't usually sold with the socket set, but if you're gonna get the socket set, make sure you don't forget the, um, these, these uh, adapters that interface with the impact driver. It makes jobs go much faster. And so you can hook up any of these sockets to this and then hook this end up to the impact driver. Very good. Now, a set of wire strippers. You may or may not find yourself needing these. Um, they are pretty versatile and it helps you strip wires, especially if you need to put two wires together or solder something. You can get by if you don't have this with just the cutters on a pointy nose pair of pliers or any pliers for that matter, but you have to be very careful to give just the right amount of pressure to cut the insulation without cutting the wiring. And so this is may, makes it much more a much easier job. This is a budget version. 
This is one item I do recommend you get a upgraded version if the budget apply uh, allows. This is a made in the USA Klein Tools wire stripper has been this particular model has been made for years and years and it's standing the test of time and electricians swear by this. So this is one thing I would I would recommend as an upgrade. Um, now a larger adjustable wrench. This is a 10 inch. You might need to move bolts on the the plumbing or you may need to, I mean, you may need to fasten plumbing or behind the washer or dryer. Um, having a larger span is very, very nice. So at this point you should have at least an eight inch and a 10 inch adjustable wrench, a larger set of pointy nose pliers plus minus, a good headlamp is absolute must. Um, so you can keep your hands free when you're working on stuff or under the sink or what have you. Um, a vice grips, a pair of vice grips are super helpful and in home ownership. I don't see yourself needing this in an apartment, but in home ownership, this is super helpful when there's something you really just need a tight grip on. Um, this will be able to do it for you. This is a wire, wire cutters. That's helpful as well. Now the reason I put this Phillips head screwdriver here is because you're gonna, you may have a nice set of Phillips head screwdriver and then you're gonna possibly need one as a beater. So something that's all with the not a rounded tip that you're gonna need to you know, use to pry things or pull out pins in the door. You don't wanna, you don't wanna mar or mess up your screwdriver that you use for your um, general purpose. So this is a more, you should have a second, in my opinion, you should have a second beater, beater uh, Phillips head screwdriver. And that may be a good time to upgrade your original Phillips head screwdriver to, and use that one as a beater. Uh, there you go, here's uh, a voltmeter. That's very useful. And this is also very helpful as well to check if wiring in your home is done correctly. And if, there, if it isn't, it'll give you a quick readout. Um, let me show you how that works. And here you go, you can quickly tell that my home has been wired correctly. At least this socket has been wired correctly. Now moving along, you may want to have a set of adjustable, um, these are just all adjustable pliers. Now an upgradable option to this would be something like this, uh, which is a Nipex, it's made in Germany, but this is, I don't really use this that often. This is probably, I would not upgrade this unless you find yourself using that a lot for some reason. I, I've used that maybe three or four times, not that often. Um, then a pair of, a pair of, pliers these are like lineman pliers but what this really i use it for is to remove stripped bolts and stripped nuts uh, i'm sorry stripped bolts um, and screws and so this has been helpful multiple times all-in-one oil squeaky doors wd-40 just clean stuff out and lubricate and then since you're possibly a homeowner i think a saw is very useful not for do-it-yourself projects, but this is just for doing outside yard work and then hacksaw for do-it-yourself projects. Now, right here we go, adhesives. Important, the main reason I put multiple adhesives out here is to show that different adhesives have different properties. There is a super glue we had talked about. There's an epoxy. This is more of a rubber cement and this is a wood glue. So it's important to try to have a few different types of adhesives and make sure you're using the correct adhesive for the correct uh, purpose. And then there's uh, silicone lubricant. It's just a general lubricant to um, where you don't want to use the three in one. The silicone's a little bit more water uh, repellent and resistant and it's, it's helpful. Lubricants, same thing goes for lubricants as does with um, adhesives. It depends on the purpose. Goof off, you're always gonna to need to clean some res sticky residue or something off, so goof off is helpful to have in home ownership. And then here's just a couple of different type of bit holders to get into tight places. 
And here, moving on, um, if you see in the back, there's a leaf blower and a jigsaw. This is where you may start getting into needing to, you know, do a little bit more advanced projects. This I use mainly for bringing, put, removing door pins um, and pry, pry bars so you don't ruin your screwdrivers. And then at this point, you probably do probably may consider buying something like a dead blow hammer to when you need to make some persuade something to get into place without marring the surface or being more gentle on the surface. Um, and then I have a soldering iron and solder set kit. If you do it yourself project, you know, you, you need to repair wiring and appliance or something like that. That that's what this may be need, may need, be needed for. And then last but not moving on towards the end, I think this is an app also a must in home ownership is a uh, socket set. And the socket set will comes with uh, combination wrenches. This is technically called a mechanics tool set. When purchasing one of these, this is a set from Home Depot Husky. My recommendation would be to go with, if you're not using it every day or you're not using it professionally, you're gonna use it a handful of times a year, go with something that's at least decent enough that's made in Taiwan um, and has a lifetime warranty such as Husky. Anytime I, if you crack one of these or something breaks, they'll, they'll replace the individual items for you. But I would just go with whichever is closest to your home, whether it's co Cobalt from Lowe's, Husky from Home Depot, or even Pittsburgh stuff from Harbor Freight is just as fine. And they all carry the lifetime warranty. So um, they're very they're very helpful in making sure your tools, if 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 damaged, will be they'll uh, make make sure you get get a new one and get go, get going on your way. And that can be and the reason I say close because you may not have you may be in the middle of a project and you you crack a socket or you you know the pawl on one of these ratchets gives out and you just need to get one so. It's easy to be able, it's, it's convenient to be able to go to the nearest um, hardware, hardware store and get a replacement. Uh, then there's, these, the reason I have these here is um, these can be used as pry bars so you don't mar up your good tools. And there's a bit set when you start doing a little bit of woodworking, wood projects, if you need to um, drill, drill different different type of materials. This is good to have a little bit of different bit set when your when your bits inevitably wear out or crack. It's good to have multiples. And last but not least, a foot stool or a foot ladder and a foldable ladder. And so there you go. That's my little overview of tools that I think. That, that in my experience, I've went through and that's the order in which I've purchased tools. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list. Exhaustive list. I may have left stuff out. You may find um, that you need something more for your needs or you own something unique that requires um, maintenance with a unique type of tool. And so uh, the recommendation I have is see what you have and what you have to maintain and see have the uh, some of the appropriate tools on hand to get minor jobs done on it so you saves you time and saves you a trip to um, the the uh, hardware store for the specific tool or saves you uh, money as well and i hope this helped and for myself at least the only two jobs i've had to call a contractor for is to replace the my garage door spring and uh, recharge my AC because the AC requires a certification and the garage door spring needed to be replaced quickly so we could go to work the next day. And it's uh, fairly dangerous to do that. And I wasn't, um, uh, that those can hold a lot of tension. And so I, in that circumstance, it was kind of important to me to have a professional do it. But apart from that, these tools paid for themselves 
at least five, six, possibly tenfold. Um, not to mention, the, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very rewarding to be able to maintain my own equipment, uh, my own property, and uh, things myself. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped everyone.